Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to Jeremiah chapter 35. This is going to be the continuation of the Jeremiah series. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Well, you know the rest. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Give them wine to drink? What? Then I took Jezaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hannah, the son of Igdaliah, the man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Masiah, the son of Shalom, Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. Verse 6. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, forever. Huh. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I believe that they were Levites, and they were to serve the Lord. Now, that's why they the, the Levites were not given a portion of the land. That is what the tithe was for in Israel, was to be given to the Levitical priesthood, the Levites, the tribe of Levi, so that they had a portion to live on. They weren't given any land. You know, they were not given anything as far as the land. So they couldn't grow their own food. So that was the that was the deal. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure these were Levites, but it sounds it sure sounds like it. So verse seven: Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days. In the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us. To drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our, so our sons, nor our daughters. And I would hope that every one of you knows what the Bible says about drunkenness. Verse 9, Nor to build houses for us to dwell in, neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed. But we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed, and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem for fear of the army of the Chaldeans and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwelt at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will ye not receive instruction to hearken to my words, saith the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine, are performed. For unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment. Notwithstanding, I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye hearken not unto me. I have, I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and go not after other gods to serve them. And ye shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But ye have not inclined your ears, nor hearkened unto me. Verse 16. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people have not hearkened unto me. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, uh, God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken unto them, but they have not heard, and have called unto them, but they have not answered. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he hath commanded you, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab the son of Rechab shall not want a man to stand before me forever. So somebody of this household will stand before the Lord and represent this household forever. So they were not to drink wine. Now, drinking wine in and of itself is not bad. I don't believe so. I mean, let's face it. At the wedding at Cana, what was the first recorded miracle of Jesus, I believe, was, was it not the turning of the water into wine? I, you know, if you listen to the Baptist church, they'll tell you, oh, it was Welch's grape juice, but uh, I don't think so. I mean, nobody under the, nobody over the age of 12 drinks grape juice at a, a wedding. And I should know because I performed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of weddings. Uh, I, hundreds. And I do mean hundreds. There was a three-day weekend I did five weddings. And there was a, a Saturday where I did four of them. Yeah, I did one in the morning, two at noontime. You know, it was two couples that were friends, they decided to do a double wedding. And then I did one in the evening. And that's just uh, four days. Nine weddings in four days. And yeah, so people drink wine at weddings. So who else was not to drink wine? Now, if you want to know where we are in the United States, England, United Kingdom, and the European Union, read the book of Judges. Matter of fact, let us read the book of Judges, uh, chapter 13. We're going to read about a very famous person. Verse 1. And the children of Israel, and the children of Israel, did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Oh boy, is that a familiar familiar sounding fa thing or what? And the children of Israel 
did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites. Now remember, uh, one of the tribes of Israel was called Dan. So he was the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bear us not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware. Now therefore beware. I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, nor and eat not any unclean thing. So don't drink wine, don't drink whiskey, and don't eat any unclean thing. You know, don't eat rats and uh, shellfish, uh, pork. Verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told me, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which, which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakes, spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, Neither let her drink wine, nor strong drink, nor any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt Offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why asketh thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret. Ah, he's, his name is secret. I, that's a joke. Hey, secret, how you doing? Verse 19. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on, for it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from 
off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame, ascended in the flame of the altar. So here it is. <laughs> you know, they're, they offer uh, a sacrifice on this rock. The flame comes out of the rock and the, the being disappears in the flame going up. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. And Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name, drumroll, Samson. Samson. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtowel. Something like that. So, there are times when the Lord wants certain of his people to avoid drinking. But there are times when the, the Lord says that those that are heavy of heart give them strong drink. Believe it or not. In Proverbs 31 and verse 6, it says, Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. So, you know, if somebody who's, has been sick for a long time and they're close to death and they want a couple shots of whiskey, there you go. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Alrighty, that is an, the end of Jeremiah chapter 35. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.